Hi, it's Darren from SimNation. Just doing a quick recap video for our Draft Day Sports College Football 2023 League, which is SNCFL. Uh, if you're looking to join a really competitive league with a lot of good coaches, it's a great league to join. Um, we use Slack predominantly, but there's a lot of engagement and interaction. Um, I, I know a question I got asked recently is, one, when am I going to do the video on Draft Day Sports College Football 2024? It's in first access right now. I'm probably going to wait a week or two before I do that. Um, normally in first access, they are making changes to it, and I want it to be a little bit more stable before I actually uh, give my thoughts on it. I will tell you from what I've seen, I saw it in beta and I saw it in first access, I, I do like what Wolverine Studios, uh, Brooks, Askel, and Gary and team have done. Uh, I, I think a lot of people will be happy with it, whether you play single player or multiplayer. Um, I do think that the interface is going to take a little bit of getting used to. Recruiting is different, so you're going to have to get used to that as well. But overall, I, I think what they're putting out is a pretty solid product. The second question is, when will we in SNCFL adopt it? Um, we never adopt a new version in the middle of a season. Um, we did that once and it was pretty disastrous. Uh, so we will wait till the end of the season, which is roughly about five weeks away. Uh, so we run three Sims a week. There's roughly about 15 Sims before we get to the season flip, which is when I normally would do it. So uh, I, I think we're still about five weeks away. Um, so hopefully by that point, it'll be stable and we'll be able to move forward with it. Um, but I want to talk about this version and what's going on in SNCFL. Um, I'm going to talk about the top 25 really quick. Um, Maryland is still number one after eight weeks. Uh, they started the season as number one. Uh, Louisiana Monroe, which is Skeletor, uh, is at number two. Gary's at number three with his Miami Hurricanes. At number four is Shark. Georgia has been coming on strong for the last few seasons. Uh, they had that really strong run last year uh, that got them into the semifinals, if I remember correctly, before they fell to Maryland. Uh, Washington State is at number five. Stewart has UCLA at number six. Frankie has Iowa at number seven. Another Stewart team is at number eight with Western Michigan. Akron's a little bit of a shock at number nine, um, but they're having a really good season. We'll talk more about them in a minute. UMass is also another shock at number 10. Um, not sure what's going on there, but going to have to make sure we fix that. Uh, I, I don't expect them to be, though. They do play some big wigs coming up. I think they're just a benefit of a lot of teams are losing right now because of the competitiveness of the league. Uh, Texas Tech moves up to number 11 after knocking off Oklahoma State uh, this past week. Ohio State drops to number 12 after an upset by Rutgers. Uh, Kevin, of course, is Rutgers. Ohio State is DP. Uh, Baylor comes in at number 13. Steve is ha has his Oklahoma Sooners at number 14. He's positioned pretty well for the uh, run at the Big uh, 12 championship. Another Shark team, Iowa State, comes in at number 15. Um, I want to say that, and I always feel bad that I get this wrong, but um, Joe Dorman is, coaches Wisconsin, and he comes in at number 16. Uh, you have Just Sample, who is at number 18. Um, Stewart has his Michigan Wolverines at number 21. Van is coming in at number 22 with his NC State Wolfpack. Alabama is now coached by uh, DP, who has his team at number 23 with his Alabama Crimson Tide. Starfinder comes in at number 24 with the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Um, if you look across the league, and we will, uh, so if we look at the standings, uh, we're eight weeks in, so in some regards, nothing has been determined. Um, I would largely say that Miami's going to win the Coastal. Uh, they're 5-0. and They're showing no signs of slowing down. I, I don't see anything really changing there. Obama has Virginia Tech, and I expect him to be uh, pretty competitive. Um, Duke now has a human coach, uh, which who is uh, Stewart. That's his fourth team. And he had a good initial surge, and it's kind of died off a little bit, but we'll see how that plays. And then the Atlantic is completely wide open. Um, I, I think right now the leader is Van with NC State. Um, 
and then it's really Boston College versus Van. Although Florida State can sneak back in, Spoof is struggling a little bit with Clemson. Um, but it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Clemson is doing a phenomenal job on the uh, recruiting trail, as you can see. Uh, they, I think this last week they actually poured in all those five stars. or poured in a predominant amount of them. That, that's just pretty impressive that they have six five stars already. Um, so he, Spoof is definitely killing on the recruiting side. Uh, Jesse Payne, no shock though. He was one of the best quarterbacks last year. Um, continuing to just do the Gary way, which is just be consistent and just keep guiding them to victory after victory. Uh, Jeremy Garcia, someone to keep an eye on for a future draft. He is a really good running back. Uh, big games this week. Uh, Florida State should beat Wake Forest. Clemson should. I, I think Spoof's going to get it turned around. I think Clemson will take out Syracuse. Uh, Van has a pretty easy game against Louisville. That should be a pretty big route. Uh, Bama versus Gary. If Gary's going to lose, this is going to be it. Um, but I don't see uh, Virginia Tech being able to knock off Miami. Miami's just too strong this year. Uh, again, right now, my guess at the midpoint of the regular season is it's going to be NC State versus Miami for the ACC championship. American Athletic, we don't really have many uh, human teams in the American Athletic. Uh, so I, I, I would say that Cincinnati tends to dominate this this uh, conference. Um, I, I don't think that that's really going to change anytime soon. East Carolina is going to be the biggest competition uh, Cable's not Cable's struggling a little bit um, with Central Florida, uh, but on the flip side, I, th I think the shock so far this season has been Tulane and Navy. Um, I, I think both of those teams have positioned themselves very well to uh, make it into the um, championship game. So I, I think it's going to be Cincinnati or East Carolina for the East, or Tulane or Navy for the West. Um, as you can see, Houston is up to the old tricks where they are just pulling in all the four stars for this conference. Um, a guy to keep an eye on is Aaron Christ out of Memphis. Uh, he's a really good wide receiver who's having a pretty phenomenal season. Um, so uh, the Big 12 is just beating the hell out of each other. Uh, so, And this is what you would expect. There's a large... Uh, congregation of human coaches in this conference. So right now, um, Texas is in the driver's seat, even though they have two losses because the three and zero. Uh, and then you really have Oklahoma, who is next, and then Texas Tech, uh, and then Iowa State and Baylor. Now the reality is, I strongly suspect that a two-loss team is going to be in the championship game. Um, so if you're Oklahoma State, I wouldn't worry. If you're West Virginia, I wouldn't worry. If you're Brigham Young, I wouldn't worry. Uh, just because there's a good chance that you can have two losses in this conference and still make it into the one playoffs, but two also make it into the championship game. Uh, Oklahoma has a game on Texas Tech because they beat Texas Tech. Texas Tech has a game on Iowa State because they beat Iowa State. Um, and then I don't expect Texas to go undefeated. They're going to get their ass kicked here shortly. Um, mostly just because they really haven't played anybody of substance. Uh, from a human coach perspective, Texas Tech is one of my teams. Oklahoma is Steve. Iowa State is Shark. Uh, BYU is um, Starfinder. Oklahoma State is Frankie. West Virginia is LA Smog. Uh, Kansas is Van. Uh, there's just still are a lot of coaches in this league. Um, I good matchup this week between Shark and Baylor. Um, unfortunately, I I don't see Baylor winning that one. I I think Shark will easily win that game. Um, he's really got his uh, Cyclones on the right track. BYU should be TCU. Um, Texas Tech versus Kansas State. That should be Texas Tech. Kansas versus Oklahoma. Van always brings it, but Oklahoma is a really good team this year. I do expect Steve just to smack him around. Uh, and then West Virginia versus Texas. Uh, my hope is this is the game where Texas finally loses. Um, McDougal actually would have a lot more yards if he hadn't been hurt, uh, but keep an eye on him. He is one of the best running backs in the whole league. 
And, and of course, Frankie's doing a good job of already pulling in some talent. He's got two five stars and then three four stars, so he's off to a pretty good strong start. Um, it'll be interesting to see. I have no prediction here because it's still pretty wide open. Uh, in the Big Ten, uh, it normally starts with Maryland and ends with Maryland. Uh, Maryland is in a good spot, although the hardest part of their schedule is coming up. Um, Ohio State was in a good spot until uh, Rutgers upset them, so great job, Kevin. Uh, Kevin is the coach of Rutgers. Um, DWK started pretty s fast. Uh, he was 3-0, and and then he ran into Maryland. Um, he's on a three-game losing streak, but I do expect him to get that righted. Uh, Stewart gets Maryland this week, so if he's going to start making some noise in the conference, this would be the week to do it. Um, that game is even, and I, I do think it's even. Uh, Maryland has been beating up on people, but they really haven't played anybody of great substance so far. They've played a couple human teams and done well, but... Really, the next two games are defined their season where they play Michigan and then Ohio State. So DP and Stewart. Um, on the other side, on the west side, it's Frankie's to lose at this point. Um, he's at five wins already. They play eight games. He's He just needs a win one or two, and he clinches. Starfinder probably is the biggest threat to him right now. Uh, I'm sorry. Joe Dorman is probably the biggest threat to him right now with Wisconsin. Uh, Starfinder is really playing for a potential position in the playoffs. Uh, but I, I expect Iowa to win the West. Um, and then in the East, we'll know a little bit more. If Maryland gets by Michigan, uh, they should be in relatively good position. Um, keep an eye on Rutgers, though, because um, Kevin's starting to get his feet under him there. And as he does, I expect Rutgers to start making some pretty big noise. Um, people to watch is LaFleur is having a really good season. Um, uh, Brad Jackson, who's the defensive end out of Rutgers, and again, that's Kevin's team, really good season. Expect Minnesota to get past Michigan State this week. My Maryland will likely beat Michigan, but we'll see how that plays out. Um, Michigan is one of the few teams I'm really worried about with Maryland. Rutgers should down Indiana. Penn State should get past Notre Dame. Wisconsin and Iowa, this is the game that will determine really the West. If Wisconsin wins this, uh, they should be in a good position to uh, make a run for the West title. If they lose it, Iowa's pretty much got it. Um, and, and again, as you can see here, is Maryland is dominating most of the recruiting, and that, that's fairly normal for the Big Ten. In Conference USA, uh, I would love to tell you that there's a great story here with the Zero to Hero videos that I'm working on with Southern Miss. There isn't. Southern Miss started strong. They were four and one and then they're on a three game losing streak. I don't know that that's going to change anytime soon. By the way, if you're ever doing a zero to hero, you got to absolutely nail the quarterback if you're doing it starting at the flip of the season. Uh, Southern Miss did it and they're paying for it now because they are very one dimensional as you can see below with Fleck being one of the leading rushers. Uh, I, I think this is Texas, San Antonio, North Texas in the west to lose. Uh, up in the um, east, it's Middle Tennessee or Marshall. I, I, I think Middle Tennessee is going to win this one, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. Uh, Southern Miss gets Florida International this week. Not a great deal of hope, though. Um, I, I think Southern Miss is just playing full bowl at this point. And then JP's Florida Atlantic takes on Old Dominion. Uh, I think um, that Florida Atlantic probably is not going to win that one. Oh, Dominion's actually pretty decent this year, so we'll see how that plays out. Move past this, but as you can see, Massachusetts is having a pretty good year. Um, they play Tulsa next. I, I think that they could realistically get out of the season with two losses. Uh, but we'll see, and again, as you can see, they got a good rushing attack. They have a good quarterback. Uh, they're just generally doing quite well. In the MAC, uh, still Stewart's to lose at Western Michigan. Akron is really making some noise. Uh, the battle of second place will be interesting between Central Michigan and Buffalo because that's me versus Skeltal. Uh, but largely... It doesn't matter what Akron does. They're going to end up against Western Michigan, and there's not a great chance of them winning that one. Western Michigan, of course, is dominating yet again the recruiting scene. 
Uh, Hollow is one of the best wide receivers. Now, the Zips have a great quarterback, but I think if you're going to beat Western Michigan, you got to run the ball. Uh, Central Michigan came close, uh, but they weren't able to pull it off. That's my other zero to hero. And I just decided to run the ball right from the beginning with them. And that's why the record is actually fairly decent. In the Mountain West, um, Boise State, and this one's pretty wide open still between Boise State, Colorado State, and Utah State. Skelter's not in that anymore. Otherwise, I'd just say it's Boise State. But I think Colorado State may pull this one out. Um, on the flip side is uh, UNLV um, and San Diego State are really the two teams to beat. Though I think UNLV is going to easily pull this out. So it'll be UNLV versus Colorado State. Uh, as you can see, UNLV is recruiting well. They have a good quarterback. Uh, so there's a lot of good reasons why I think that's going to happen. Uh, in the Pac-12, uh, Washington State, which is one of my teams, they're in a pretty good position to win it. They hold a game over Stanford. Uh, they already knocked off Cal. Um, they just they have to finish strong. Um, but largely, they should be able to win the North. Uh, in the South... I, I, I hate to say it, but in the south outside of Utah, no one has a chance to catch Stewart with UCLA. It's his. Uh, Burdick is having a really great season, but not just as good as Merriman is. Merriman is off the charts. He's a senior, uh, and he's trying to collect some records before he leaves. Uh, keep an eye on Tebold, who has six sacks. Uh, he's having a really good season. But as you can see, uh, UCLA and Washington State are really dominating the whole um, recruiting thing. Stanford versus USC, this should be a good one. This is Brian versus Skeletor. Stanford's probably going to win it, but Brian's starting the path of getting USC rebuilt, uh, which is good to see. Gary versus Washington, this should be Arizona State. Uh, Cal versus Oregon, I want to say that Cal is, um, I should remember, this is Bama. Uh, I expect Cal to win this one. Cal is doing decently in his first year. Uh, this is Van versus Arizona. Expect Van to win that, um, especially since he's trying to play for a bowl. The Southeastern is really kind of, it's a little bit like the Big 12 in that everybody's beating each other up, so it's wide open, except for the two leaders. Louisiana, Monroe, and Georgia are going to win their conferences, their divisions more than likely. Uh, the only problem that uh, Skelter still has to do is he's got to get past Mississippi, uh, he should be able to do that. I think you give DP a season at Alabama, and I, I think he's going to be able to turn that around as well. Um, and, of course, LSU uh, is no longer as good as they used to be, um, mostly just because um, I moved off away from them. Uh, Georgia just can't say enough about the work that Shark's done there. He's done a phenomenal job. Uh, Udo's not having a very good season, but part of that has to do with he was away from Tennessee last year. So uh, he's having kind of a mixed bag as well. Keep an eye on Ashby. He's having a really great season. Uh, and then as you can see is Georgia and UOM are really dominating the recruiting scene. Florida versus Alabama. Soa versus DP. I like DP in this one. Louisiana Monroe versus Auburn. This one will be interesting. Skelter really struggles with Auburn. Uh, so, and if I remember correctly, Auburn actually has a coach now. Uh, no, they don't. It's Alabama. That's right. Uh, so I, I will just say that he struggled with them in the past. So it's a potential upset. Udo should beat Kentucky. Uh, and then really that's the only big human games. Sunbelt, um, the only real, uh, human player who I remember, if I remember correctly, is in this conference, is um, DWK, who is at, no, they're now two. There's one at Georgia State and one at Georgia Southern. Um, I apologize. I should know all this stuff off the top of my head. But DWK is at Georgia Southern. Spoof is at Georgia State. Uh, Spoof has a long road ahead of them with Georgia State. They've really struggled in the past. DWK has really turned around Georgia Southern, so it's good to see that. But... Again, the teams to beat in this one are going to be Troy and Louisiana Lafayette. Uh, but DWK is definitely making noise. And again, you can see one of the reasons why Louisiana and Lafayette's pouring in five and four stars. So be interested to see how that plays. So DWK plays Troy. 
If he's going to make a move in the conference, he's got to win this game. Georgia State uh, versus Appalachian State, uh, they just they need to win this one uh, at Georgia State because it's the bet one of the best matchups they're going to get for the rest of the season. So Spoof hopefully can win that one. Um, as far as playoffs go, it's still really too early to tell. Remember in our in our um, conference, I'm sorry, in our league, it's the top 16 teams that go. Uh, so right now, if we, <laughs> excuse me, if we had the playoffs today, um, you'd have Maryland, uh, Skeletal, uh, Gary, Shark, me, Stewart, Frankie, Stewart, uh, CPU, CPU, uh, me, DP, uh, CPU, Steve, Shark, and Joe Derman. Uh, these two teams are going to drop out. Um, mostly Akron's going to drop out once Western Michigan gets a hold of them. Because, uh, again, they just don't match up well. And I strongly suspect that UMass will drop out once they have to play North Carolina and Rutgers and Nebraska. They're not going to win those games. That's when they'll start dropping out. Uh, so if you want to join the league, we have a lot of good teams still open. Uh, if you look at the top 25, um, I, I would say that some great teams are still open is, of course, Akron and Massachusetts. I just talked about those. Baylor's a really good team to take. Uh, Texas is open. Uh, Colorado State, Boise State, um, Louisiana, Lafayette. Plus, there's some th traditional powerhouses like Auburn, North Carolina, uh, those Michigan State. Those teams are open. So. Uh, this is just a quick recap video. I thank you for your time tonight. And if you want me to do anything specific, let me know. Probably in the next week or two, I will be doing a Draft Day Sports College Football 2024 video where I talk about what I like and what I don't. Uh, so have a great night. Talk to you soon. Thank you.